Greetings friends, it's Zera, back with another classic WoW Hunter video. Today we're going to go over user interface, macros, a couple of weak auras, and also just my add-ons in general. So, I've had a couple people hit me up in Discord, they've seen my UI through streaming, or they've seen it on YouTube, or they've just noticed screenshots that I've posted to help people out. By the way, while we're on the topic, if you haven't joined our community Discord, be sure to check the link down below. Our numbers are growing daily. There are a lot of really helpful individuals there. People just want to help other hunters, other players get just generally just understand information or help people that are a little confused on how to do things, conflicting on how to maybe get rocked alar, how to fight the demons, so on and so forth. So be sure to just check that out. Link down in the description below. Now, I've got my weapon swing timer across the center here. It's right in front of me. So let me go ahead and shoot something to give you guys kind of an idea of what we're looking at here there's my weapon swing timer when i'm in the white i know i'm good for multi-shotting aim shotting everything else and it's pretty straightforward and after that scatter shot he's dead and if you also notice that right below my weapon swing timer we've got an auto shot slash you know how many arrows do you have in your quiver macro again we'll get in the macros in a minute followed by the aim shot which is also a macro this is the macro is designed more well, again we'll get into it in a little bit but the macro is designed to prevent fallout with an auto shot after utilizing your aim shot and then multi-shot rapid fire these are all set up right here M move back up to the center here i've got my trinket menu here this is designed for just quick shifting if i just hover over it click left click it'll put trinkets in the first slot if i hover over and go to the right it will automatically shift it to my second trinket so this is very quickly very nicely designed i've got it set up to where it goes eight trinkets high and then it'll roll back over to here and it'll go eight more high and so on and so forth i doubt very seriously i'm ever going to have more than you know a half dozen trinkets at a time but if i did it, it'll be fine it'll just roll over this way cover my weapon my weapon swing timer a little bit not that big a deal but for those of you that are PvPers, I highly recommend getting this. This is critical. This is amazing. Matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, you can actually set this up to automatically adjust, like auto sync with, depending on what you're fighting between duels. If you target something, it will automatically say, "Oh, you're fighting a caster, or you're fighting a pre, or excuse me, you're fighting a warlock." Boom. Let me put on your shadow reflector. Oh, you're fighting a mage. Oh, let me put on your frost deflector. It's quite amazing check it out it's really good we'll look at the specific add-on here in just a second but that's how it's that's how it's designed that's where i've got it placed love it the other thing is my aspects are on the left and my survival toolkit is on the right the reason i did this is because they're six buttons on either side they balance each other out they hover right underneath my pet and right underneath my target of target so i love it evenly spaced out love it love it love it uh, the only thing I'll say about these, these are all macros, and I literally just made the macros so that, number one, if I clicked Aspect of the Hawk, it won't disable it, whereas in normally if I bring, bring Aspect of the Hawk down and I would click it again or accidentally hit the keybind, it would deactivate it. Whereas if I hit this, it'll activate, and then if I hit it again by accident, it won't deactivate. It'll reactivate, it'll stay on. And also, it's getting rid of that god-awful, like, I don't know, like arcane explosion type icon. I hate that. I can't stand it. I want to be able to just take a quick glance and see where my aspects are and know, okay, that's Aspect of the Hawk. That's Cheetah. That's Monkey. That's Wild. Down the list. So that's literally all those macros are made for. And again, we'll, I'll show you those. It's the same macro. And again, all these macros down in the description in the Discord. I've got three channels, text channels set up for various best lists for hunters, all these macros and add-ons are there as well, along with various important information specifically designed for Phase 3 and how we are to interact with it and how we get the best out of who we are as hunters. So, again, check out that Discord. There's a lot of really great information there. So, again, Aspects on the left, Survival Toolkit on the right. These are also all macros. We'll get to those in a minute. And then on the kind of dead center here we've got the mini map this is an add-on basic mini maps love this it allows me to have a little bit better idea of where i'm at where i'm going i can see things a little bit further without having to like open the map and it's actually really really handy so be sure to check out this this add-on and I, it allows me to move the mini map down dead center and I, I literally don't have to like train my eyes to go up to the right to see the mini map or what i'm tracking and keep everything focused right here in the center love it 
And then just to the left of it, you've got your stings. I've got two macros for Serpent Sting Rank 1 and Serpent Sting Rank 8. Serpent Sting Rank 1 is what I used to pull. And I know a lot of people are like, oh my god, you're so horrible. You should never do that. Oh my goodness. I'm like, you should be using, like, Concussive Shot. It's immune. It doesn't do anything. I'm like, well... Serpent Sting's immune, like, half of the raid mobs are immune to Serpent Sting anyway, because most of the things we're fighting are elementals, and also the fact that rank 1 Serpent Sting is, like, one of the, if not the lowest costing abilities in the game. I mean, Concussive Shot is 124 mana, and Serpent Sting is 14 mana. I mean, kind of a no-brainer there. Plus, things like Concussive Shot or Arcane Shot all have this thing called a cooldown, Rank 1 Serpent Sting does not. I can cast it as often as I want. It's a super stupid low cooldown. Even if a lot of people would say, hey, you really should go with... Uh, I'll see if I can find it. It should be under Marksmanship, I'm sure. Yeah, you should go with Rank 1 Distracting Shot. It's 18 mana, 8 second cooldown. I'm like, yeah, well, Rank 1 Serpent Sting still 14 mana. So this basically allows me to endlessly pull without having to worry about cooldowns, mana cost, so on and so forth. And the reason I have it macroed is because it can, one's labeled 1, one's labeled 8, and this one is designed for me to auto-target what's, what's directly in front of me, and the rank 8 one is not, because this way I can say, oh, while well, I'm pulling, I'm still pulling, swap them out. If I'm at a boss, I want to go to rank 8. This doesn't do anything with my... This doesn't do a damn thing when it comes to targeting because I'm already targeting the boss. I don't want to have it accidentally changing my target in mid-fight. So I just, it's basically stupid proof. I, I love it and just take a quick glance. All this is one that says eight, no problem. Switch it over. Uh, but that's, that's, these are my stings. These are all set up on the left side. And then on the right, you've got your basics, your hunter's mark, your raptor strike, your wing clips, your concussive shot. And again, these three are shift conditionals to arcane shot, multi-shot, rapid fire. And I literally just did that for the sake of cleaning up the bars. I mean, I didn't want to have, you don't want to have multi-shot on your bars or arcane shot on your bars or rapid fire on your bars if you don't need to. And literally the only reason that these, these four are even here is because, well, I want to know what the cooldown duration is left on these three. And I want to know how much ammo I've got left. No problem. No problem at all. So while we're on the topic of my pet, because I see that he's not very happy, this is my pet management bar on the left. Mine is stone form, but I figured, what the hell? It was the only place left I could really put it and honestly if I really wanted to I could just pull beast training up here and it could be considered you know full-on pet management but who gives a dirky I might change that later but from left to right eagle eye eyes of the beast these are great tools you'll love to have them on your bar and because that way you don't have to go piddling through your spell book looking for them if you need them for some strange reason so they're here just for the sake of being here and then of course this is my it says dismiss pet but it's the feed pet macro. Again, we'll get into the macro in a minute, but let me just show you what this nifty little thing does. If I just press shift R, then it will dismiss my pet and I'll go ahead and dismiss my pet now. Just to give you an idea of what this does. If I press it again, then it'll call my pet. And if I'm moving around or if I'm say, if, I, if, I, heck, if I'm afraid I don't want to move or pathing or whatever, I don't want to pull something, then just if I just jump and press it, it will now feed my pet. There you go. This is literally a three button macro. It performs three separate functions. Call pet, dismiss pet, feed pet. Love this. It's an all in one. And this one is your min pet and revive pet macro. So if my pet's dead, it will revive him. If he's alive, it will cast min pet. Absolutely love these macros. Everything's dialed into these two separate ones. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, your utility, you can call it your utility corner. You've got True Shot Aura, which obviously we have to have that on our bars. You've got Disengage and Distracting Shot, Joint Macro for Conditionals, T for Distracting or Disengage, and then Shift T for Distracting Shot. Basically, similar functions, just opposite wavelengths. Disengage is designed to drop threat, Distracting Shot's meant for you to gain threat. And then, of course, Trank shot here, and then this is our handy dandy little disarm macro that I have picked up with the help of an add on. We'll talk, we'll get to that in a minute. But literally, just shift F takes it on, takes it off. This works both in and out of combat. Whereas in my original one in the Discord a few weeks ago, it worked perfectly out of combat. Well, when you were in combat, you had to click it and then. Rock Delaro would pop up on your cursor, and then you have to come over and click your range weapon. This, real simple, real direct, press of a button, 
and it goes on, it goes off, no hiccups, no snags, no issues. And of course, Scattershot and Volley, they're also key bound. Some of my traps and my flare and my fiend out, they're all key bound right here. It all works wonderfully. And along the bottom, this is pet slash tracking slash professions. That's literally what this is. You've got Dragonkin, Beasts, Humanoids, Hidden, Fine Minerals, and then you've got Fine Treasure, Giants, Elementals, Demons, Undead, and of course, First Aid, Beast Training, Engineering, Smelting. It's all right there for the taking. And again, on the right, these are pretty basic, pretty straightforward. These are all consumables and stuff that I probably wouldn't necessarily have to look at more than every so often, like a Hearthstone, so on and so forth. That's pretty much it, guys. That's it for my layout. It's pretty well designed. I like having my pet bar down here, kind of dead center. Another thing that I want to point out is my macro. So let's go ahead and backslash reload. I hate bartender because it does this thing where like if I click something it also need to light everything up can't stand it but let's go ahead and look at the macros so the first thing a lot of people ask me is how in the world do you get your auto shot macro to look like this to where you've got your ammunition counter and I'm like well it's pretty straightforward you got your typical target enemy no exist dead help blah 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 backslash you know exclamation point auto shot this prevents you from if you have to actually if you accidentally you know click your auto shot while it's already active it won't cancel it it won't even affect it at all so that's why i like having it in my scroll wheel so i can just scroll 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 and just have fun with it the start attack macro this is for if you happen to be you know in your dead zone it'll automatically switch you to melee attack wonderful little addition there and of course if your target is dead it'll clear target but if you notice show tooltip is 418 now this is oh excuse me cancel that if i open my bag here this is bag one two three four or excuse me it goes zero one two three four so bag zero is your initial traveler's backpack the one you start with by default and then bag one bag two bag three bag four and I do not the first or the second. I go all the way to the last slot. So I have the, I have the ancient senior wrapped lamina. If I didn't have this 18 slot quiver, if I had a 16 slot quiver, then that would go from an 18 to a 16. So notice my very last piece of ammunition in that last slot. Now, if I took that out, look what happens. It now goes blank. But now the act, now, now the macro still works. This still, this still is a. This still operates as an auto shot. Let me show you if I can find something to attack real fast. This still operates. So if you happen to just accidentally not have anything in that slot, don't worry. The macro will still work. You'll just get this big, ugly question mark. So that's why you want to just go ahead and just slide that over and make sure there's always an ammunition there. And it'll always tell you what, how much ammunition you have left. I actually love this. This is probably my favorite macro. It's a time saver. It reduces a lot of headache. And it just kind of streamlines the whole process for me to know exactly how much ammunition I have in my bags without actually having to open it up and look. Now, for the next one, Hunter's Mark is literally the exact same thing as Auto Shot minus the start attack. And instead, and instead of casting Auto Shot, it is casting Hunter's Mark. Same thing. If I'm not targeting anything, let me go ahead and get rid of this bear. If I'm not targeting anything, it'll target him and automatically cast Hunter's Mark. Same thing. If I don't have him targeted, it'll automatically shoot and target and shoot him with auto shot love these macros it really makes my life very very painless moving on to this feed pet macro this is a dismiss pet call pet feed pet and then it tells it automatically where in my bags it is much like the auto shot with the counter i put all my pet food over here in the far bottom slot of my very first bag which again reads 0 16. now i do kind of group up my pet food you see i got these two slots available generally when i've got enough pet food i put everything right here in this far corner so it would look something like this so if i had all my pet food kind of just chilling right here this is what it would look like and this would go down to zero and then you know it would just give me an error message saying hey you know you're not feeding your pet and then i just open my oh okay and I just slide over a few more slide over a stack over in this spot and you're good to go so again really really handy love how this macro works and i might what i might actually do i haven't actually thought about this what i could do is do something like this and you know you could do something similar to this you just go zero one sixteen and this tells you exactly how much 
you know food you have left so i have i know i have 32 stacks uh, or not 32 stacks but 32 individual cured ham steaks to feed my pet so that number starts getting low you're gonna know oh i might want to think about going back to the vendor and getting some food but if you'll notice i left this i changed the icon from the typical so if i so if i so if i went back to here then it would look like that and that's not very accurate that's not very helpful so i just decided to do the typical call pet and be done with it but i for me personally if i was to change it i probably just make it the tamer because it's basically literally is just a full-on pet maintenance macro you've got call pet dismiss pet feed pet and you're good to go but again it's however you want to do it i mean it's it's up to it's entirely up to you i you know if if if, if i had to be completely honest i kind of like the the call pet because it's minimal it's simple and it doesn't duplicate anything that i'm not already going to see and again it's really up to you so it's your decision but i like this having this 016 on here so it can tell me exactly you know how much food i have like that i think that's a nice little addition fiend death straightforward stop casting stop casting stop casting so if i come over here and i find something and i want to go ahead and stop what i'm doing then it'll stop my aim shot it'll stop whatever i'm doing now yes i do have to hit it a second time for it to take effect but other than that it's it's perfectly fine what in the hell just happened oh yeah i forgot i added this now this the, again this is up to you fiend death is something that i know a lot of hunters will like accidentally hit you know piss them off so if you notice right then i was clicking i was like what what the hell why is fiend death not going off fiend death's not going off because i'm not in combat if i'm not in combat or my pet's not in combat which is thus would put me in combat then i can never i can sit here and spam like my keybind all day long and fiend death will never go off because i am not in combat so if you don't want that functionality you literally just take that out and there you go save it and now i can do well if i hit the right macro you can fiend death all day long no problem or if you don't want to have that chance of running that risk just slide that open brackets combat close bracket and then you're good to go You'll never be able to hit Fiend Death at all. Which, by the way, notice that I'm spamming it with absolute with a full cooldown almost, and it's not giving me an error message because the game, the game, the 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 AI recognizes. Well, you're you're an idiot because you're in combat. You're not in combat, so I can't proc this anyway. So, kind of handy. I like that little functionality. So again, that's entirely up to you. Now, the Raptor Strike. This is going to. If you have mod shift arcane shot because we're almost never going to use arcane shot so no point in really having it on your bars so might as well have it combined to something that is going to be on your bars which is raptor strike at least that's my thought process and you can change the moderator to anything it can be control it can be shift it can be whatever you want you know this you want it to be a stop cast and immediately you want raptor strike to be right up there because i've seen a lot of people they'll do like the start attack first and then raptor strike well, that works to a point, and then all of a sudden you get into combat and your Raptor Strike's not immediately going off. And then you see some hunters that just run in that are melee weaving, and the Raptor Strike immediately goes off. I'm like, well, what the hell? Well, I changed the orientation of this, and I went from Raptor Strike being second in line to being first in line, and now Raptor Strike's going off just without any problems whatsoever. Because your melee swing timer will reset if you happen to auto white, you know, auto attack with melee first, it will reset your swing timer. Whereas in, if you're just auto-shotting for days and days and days, well, your, your, your melee swing timer is just chilling. It's, ch it's ready to go. And if you tell it to do Raptor Strike first, Raptor Strike without delay, pow, no problems. So this is really nifty. I love this. This will also utilize Counter-Attack and Mongoose Bite in the same macro. It will not, it will not fail. This macro is beautiful. Love it. So if you want an all-in-one melee macro, this is it. All right, so this is your aspects, and we're going to skip the rest of them because they literally lay out the exact same way. Show tooltip, hashtag show tooltip, slash cast, exclamation point, whatever the aspect is. And then come in here, find the icon that matches, for example, aspect of the cheetah. I'm pretty sure is actually pretty close to the front. Yeah, it's right here. It's the one scroll down, and it's right there, along with other ones that look like, there's one that looks like Furious Howl. 
There's one that looks like Aspect of the Cheetah. There's one that looks like Aspect of the Beast. There's one that looks like Aspect of the Pack. You scroll up, there's one that looks like Aspect of the Monkey. So on and so forth. They're all here. It's, it's all right here for you. So just select that. That way you don't get that same god-awful arcane explosion or whatever the hell icon replaces it. I like this. Uh, these are macros that are kind of handy, but I'm not going to bother putting those in. Th this is a movement. I'll give You guys give a chance to pause this if you really want this. But this is a script that tells me like how fast I'm moving. So if I wanted to just look down at my chat window, you can't see it. But it tells me your current maximum speeds are running 100%, flying 100%, swimming 67.4603%. So this is more or less just for testing. If I want to test and see if certain enchants or things like that are stacking with my mount speed or with my running speed or my swim speed, this is just a really cool macro for me to be able to do that. And then this one is your, you know, Prince Najak macro for you know, hunting and tracking him down in order for you to get things like the, I can't even remember what it's called. It is the, the title charm, I believe the three second stun. It's amazing for PVP, but I never farmed it before the, uh, all the, what do you call them? Now we don't have them anymore. All the different phases, not phases, the, uh, shifts or whatever. Anyway, you guys know what I'm talking about. They got rid of those and farming the Jacques is really, really kind of a pain in the butt so I'm, I'm i'm gonna wait a few months and then i'm gonna go back i still have this macro on standby for when i find him it's really handy it's really cool and i'll probably do a video on how to use it later uh this one is a pet follow macro i don't actually use this one anymore but he used to really handy uh it forces your pet to follow and you can even go a step further and just do pet passive i mean this you know basically performs the same function pet passive pet follow and then cast all three levels of dash so no matter what level your pet is, if it has any rank of dash, it'll utilize this and your pet will just flee back to you as fast as humanly possible. Scatter shot. This one's also pretty straightforward. It's an auto target macro for, and it also puts your pet on stay, puts your pet on passive, and then it'll cast scatter shot. So normally if you use scatter shot when your pet's still physically attacking that target, without putting this in there, your pet will break your scatter shot. It's a pain in the butt. But putting this in there will put your pet on stay right on top of the target. Now this, this is important to note. This will put your pet on stay right in front of the target you just hit. If your pet was already attacking that target, let's say that you were fighting a rogue and the rogue's in your face. Your pet's attacking him, you're attacking him, but he's in melee. You scatter shot. You, while you're trying to get away, your pet's going to sit right there in front of that rogue. It's not going to move. But it also will not attack the rogue either. So that's really handy. But remember, if you do this, you're going to have to re-engage your pet with either follow or attack following, you know, scatter shot falling off so keep that in mind this is really handy macro love this but there is that one side effect you will have to manually force your pet to attack after it's all said and done here's your aim shot macro this is designed to reduce fallout or delay with your auto shots following an aim shot and i wanted to do a video on this but i'll just go ahead and explain it here there's a lot of issues if you look at week if you look not weak horse but if you look at warcraft logs a lot of hunters are having like a half second or even a full second delay with an auto shot following their aim shot cast and the reason they're having that problem is because of not having this macro what this macro does is you'll cast aim shot max rank and then it while aim shot is while aim shot is channeling you will drop your target and then you will retarget the same target you picked up so the aim shot will actually go off and for some reason by clearing your target history it allows auto shot to go off without delay i don't know why the api is set up that way but something in the code is forcing auto shot to be delayed and this gets rid of that so you definitely want to check out this macro this is my Unequipped range in the equipped rock delar. This is this macro over here. Um, this ties into a add-on. I'll go ahead and show you this add-on real fast. This is Neff Hunter Helper. You'll download this add-on, and it will allow you access to the unequipped ranged function. And you literally like you don't do any. There's no internal options, configurations, or anything of that kind. You just install the add-on, make this macro. Put on your bar, give it a key bind, and you're good to go. You literally hit this button, and it'll disarm in or out of combat. Hit it again, and you have your bow. So literally just before every class call, hit this. He throws out a hunter class call. It's done. It's over. 
slap it back on, you go right back to attacking. Really nifty, one-stop shop for this. Love this. Uh, next one is Trank Shot. This is kind of on the same level with Fiend Death because of the stop casting. You're gonna, you don't want to be that guy who's just started an aim shot cast and either has to stop and move or press escape or whatever. You want to just push a button and go. So this will stop whatever you're doing currently and immediately cast Trank Shot. So this is a one-stop shop. Love this. This is a great macro. And again, aspects, these are all the same as before. I mean, literally, the only thing that's different is I changed the icon and then I changed the, you know, the last word. It's of the wild, of the monkey, of the pack, so on and so forth. Now, the wing clip macro. This one's kind of funny. This is a, like, absolutely, without fail, wing clip macro. And I did tie in multi-shot to it. But again, you guys don't have to tie these things. You, you can completely tie, remove that or you can make it, you know, it could honestly, a good combination would be Raptor Strike Wing Clip. I didn't even think of that. That would be a balling, a balling combination. If you do Raptor Strike Wing Clip, fantastic macro. But me, I like having Wing Clip in Raptor Strike and Concussive Shot all two, three, four. That's what they were in vanilla. That's what they are in retail. That's what they are for me in classic. So, but this is a wing clip rank three, rank two, rank one, and it prioritizes, you know, starting attack because wing clip doesn't, isn't like Raptor Strike where it shares the same internal cooldown that auto attack in melee and Raptor Strike does. Your wing clip, you can spam it forever without a cooldown. So there's no harm in putting start attack here first. So, but what will happen if you don't have enough mana to cast max rank wing clip, because if you look, Wing Clip is really nifty because you can go from rank 3, which is 80, to rank 2, which is 60, down to rank 1, which is 40. Really cool. So if you are starved and you don't have 80 mana, but you have 70 mana, it'll cast rank 2. And if you don't have 60 mana, but you've got 50 mana, it'll cast Wing Clip rank 1. This is really, really cool. This is basically a fail safe built into this. Love this. Now... Volley and Flare. These are quite literally the same macro, except one is for Flare, one is for Volley. Now, it says at cursor, so what does that mean? I just come over here, and I click my keybind for Flare, and it automatically releases the Flare wherever my cursor is at. Same thing with Volley. If I want to do Volley, I just click the button, wherever my cursor is at, Volley is going to unleash. Love this. This is a great macro. You, you, you really want to have this in your arsenal. This is a time saver. Love this. Now, for the traps, these are the exact same, just like the aspects, just like Volley and Flare, exact same macros for all of these, minus, you know, I just replaced the type of trap. So how the macro works, you'll stop attacking, whatever it is you're doing, you'll stop attacking, and you'll cast Freeze Trap, which is great. You just lay it, you, whoop, excuse me, go ahead and do this real quick, save that, and then hit, just hit the one button, boom, problem solved. But built into the macro is going to be freezing trap if you're out of combat but if you're in combat well obviously you can't lay a trap so it's going to skip over that it's going to come straight to fiend death fiend death are you in combat okay then you'll fiend death your pet will go on stay your pet will be on passive and then you just simply just hit the macro again and it'll work just fine you'll lay your frost trap it's all well and good and what you can really do and i'm not going to show you how to do this because it might be against tos i don't know there's different kind of uh, there's different kind of third party like Razor comes with Razor Synapse. Corsair comes with its own design. You can use built-in software with your with your mouse or with your keyboard to simply just enable turbo or whatever else and allow you to just click the same button multiple multiple times in the span of a of a split second. And what you do is you can just come over here. You can target this this poor hunter. Just stop moving. So let me go ahead and get myself in combat here. And I'm going to go ahead and stop attacking. My pet will attack. And then all I can do, I can't do anything. I can't do anything. I can't do anything. Well, I'll just go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and hit freeze trap. And then I'll hit it again. And boom, there you go. My pet stopped attacking. I fiend death. Freeze trap came open and it immediately laid it down. This is this is priceless. This 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 almost makes it impossible for you to not have to even bother doing things like forcing your pet to follow you or forcing your pet to be on passive or even forcing you to scatter shot before i mean as you can clearly tell that bear was still attacking my pet but since my pet wasn't re-engaging 
we were both out of combat. So drop the freeze trap. Problem solved. So this is a really handy macro. I love this macro. This macro is a lot of fun. So be sure to check that out. And again, it works for all four different kinds of traps. Concussive shot. Again, this is up to you. I've got this set as a conditional to be concussive shot, rapid fire. You could set this up to be a wing clip. Concussive shot It's entirely up to you. I just like the way this looks. And moving on, I have a macro for healing myself with bandages instead of healing anybody else. And disengage again. This is mod shift, distracting shot, disengage by itself. And the rest of these are as follows. I've got a couple of graphics inner, uh, a couple of graphics macros. So if I bring this down to my bar and I hit this, I don't know if you'll notice the screen will change. Probably not because I think that's already been enabled. Same thing with shadows. Nothing's changed. But these are really nifty macros I picked up. Uh, console macros that enhance shadows and enhance the graphics even further. So these are really, really cool. You might want to check these out. Now, the... Serpent Sting macros, again, these are pretty straightforward. These are target macros. The ones used for me kiting, again, rank one, lowest mana costing ability, zero cooldown, easy to pull with, love it. This one's the same thing, but it's rank eight. This tells me, this basically tells me, okay, just at a glance, okay, this is rank one, this is rank eight, no problem, just switch over if it's a boss fight, or if I'm going back to pulling, I'll go back to rank one. Easy money. My ready check macro, self-explanatory. And that, I believe, is it, gentlemen. This is a, for some reason, this is an ad. This is a macro that's getting installed from an add-on. I don't know why. I've deleted it several times, but it keeps coming back. It's from my, uh, my guild recruiter management add-on. I just don't really care for it, but I'm not going to get rid of it. So I'll just leave that one there. But that's it. I mean, that's all my macros in a nutshell. Everything kind of speaks for itself. And a lot of these leave you know, are open for interpretation. You guys can change any of these you want. Matter of fact, the one that I'm, uh, I'm kind of curious about right now is changing, is changing something like Arcane Shot and Wing Clip, but I don't know. I, I'm, I'm far more likely to use Raptor Strike and Wing Clip than I am ever going to use Arcane Shot, so why would I put Raptor, or why would I put wing clip to a conditional and not leave arcane shot to a conditional so i'll probably leave it right where it's at but that's up to you guys you guys can uh, maneuver the conditionals to whatever you want you can choose to have things like the auto shot count or the uh, ammunition counter on your auto shot or the pet food counter on your pet food macro it's entirely up to you so let's move on finally uh, i know this has been going on drawing on for a while but let's get to the add-ons. The add-ons are pretty self-explanatory. You've got details, gather mate too. This is for collecting herbs and whatnot. This will allow me, if I can go ahead and close this. Like for example, you can see, I know where there's mithril here, exactly where there's mithril here. This is actually very intuitive for like low level places because you have to update this yourself. You have to go in and update this yourself. There is a couple of people online that have gone out of their way to get this information and upload files that you can download and sync with yours but i don't know I've, I've had issues it's been kind of glitchy this is more or less for those guys for people that want to just swap over to another gathering profession and you can immediately look at your map and know exactly where you need to go to those low level places and find all this stuff without having to like pull up a second monitor and all this other nonsense you can just look and say okay along the along the east side of this mountain range here in Dark Shore is a good place to go to get some, or whether or not in Dunmarog, you got copper veins all along here, or if I wanted to go to some place like Elwyn Forest, there's copper veins all around here, right around here, and the Fargo Deep Mine's a good place, so on and so forth. I probably don't need to have this installed, but I have it active just for the sake of, if I come across something that's not already mapped, I'll grab it, throw it on there, and here's the best part about it, you don't actually have to have, like if it's, a, if it's an ore deposit, you don't need ore. You don't need to be a miner to document where it's at. Just right-click it, and the add-on will say, oh, you're trying to mine this? Okay, well, I know I know there's a deposit here. Really great. So if somebody out there in the community, it's probably going to be me at some point when i am got nothing else going on, wants to log on and literally run through every single zone and map out every single herb, ore, fishing, hole, everything, you can find all this information. I really wish the community would come together and just work on this and get it to where everybody had access to this because this is a great tool. And if it had all available 
nodes for fishing or herbalism, everything, this would be a priceless add-on. But uh, unfortunately, there's not a lot of people that are out there doing it. I might do a video to teach people how to do it so they can upload their own files and everybody can kind of just synchronize together and come up with a master file. But that might take a few weeks, maybe in a month or two to get that figured out. But I don't know. I might write that one down as a video idea. Uh, Guild Roster Manager. We just talked about that. This basically is for people that are class leaders, officers. Otherwise, I wouldn't recommend it, but it's really handy. And then you've got Leatrix Maps, Leatrix Plus. Leatrix is amazing. Uh, I love the Leatrix Map. This is what allows me to have this. I can zoom in super close or zoom in super far. It's got player and cursor, you know, coordinates on here. Really handy. And it allows me to not have to, you know, cover up my whole screen. So if I wanted to, I could make this kind of... You know, if I'm starting moving, there is an option, kind of like in retail, where you can cause it to kind of, you know, dull out or transparency to decrease so you can actually see where you're going. But I just like the fact that it doesn't take up my entire screen, so I can still see my chat window. I can still see what's going on. If I get attacked, I can hear it. I can see it. So this is really handy. And Leatrix Plus is just amazing. I can come in here and I can say, hey, uh, you know, show me free bag slots. Show me wild hit links. Or for frames, show colored frames, show icon portraits, show player chain, or social, you can block duels, party invites, and then you can do disable chat fade. This is my favorite. So you can't see my chat window, but you know how your chat window will like by default will fade out over time. I just disable that completely so I can constantly see what's going on in chat. I don't have to worry about missing something. Uh, use class colors in chat. This is awesome. This tells you that basically puts the name of the player into whatever class color it is. Increase chat history. So if I want to go back and scroll all the way back up to see my entire chat history from when I first logged on, it'll be there. This is all so much so cool. But the best part about this, Leetric Plus, the best, best part about this is the automation. You've got sell junk automatically, repair automatically, and there's even another one, stand and dismount. If checked, your character will automatically stand or dismount when an action is prevented because you're either seated or mounted. This is huge. So, like, if you're mounted and you get to the Flight Master and you right-click and you try to fly somewhere and you're still mounted, guess what? I'm not going to let you. This will automatically dismount you and send you on your way. If I had to pick one add-on besides the Nefarian Hunter Helper, this is it. This, this add-on, you got to get this. This thing will... God, it's such a time saver. Love this. Oh, and faster auto loot too. Like I can't tell you the the time difference between right you know, shift clicking or just hovering over and right clicking. Of course, that option can be changed in your typical interface, but this will auto loot super fast. It saves you several seconds when you're auto looting. It just it doesn't even delay. I mean, literally, you right click and like I can't even. I don't even get a. Sh I don't. I can't tell you how many times I've picked up an, a Boe epic out in the random world, not realizing it because you don't ever even see what items you're picking up. It just bloop, you just right click and poof, you move on. It's it's awesome. Ultimate time saver right here. Be sure to check out Leetrix Plus. Moving on, you got Luna unit frames. This is what I have. Uh, Luna is pretty self-explanatory. You can see I've got my raid bars up here. Uh, this is really, really cool. I love Luna unit frames. I've got it set up to where it's only two-dimensional. You can't have this where you have like three-dimensional representation of your character portrait or your enemy portrait or your pet portrait. I don't like that. It takes up too much processing power. Not that I'm struggling for processing power. I've got a, I've got a 12-core processor, or excuse me, 8-core processor, but still, it's not going to eat up a lot, but I just, I'd really just have it do literally show me health, resources, buffs, debuffs, that's it. I don't need anything else. I didn't like the typical, you know, built-in WoW interface, so Looney Union Frames is what I went with. There's several others out there. Just find one that works for you. Neff Hunter Helper, again, this this adds the unequipped range command for hunters so they don't break their weapons during the class call from Nefarian. So download this, install, and then utilize the add-on that I showed you. Again, link in the description down below for all that information. Omni CC, uh... I actually am not using this currently. Uh, I need to actually get in here and, and kind of figure this out. But I need to go ahead and just disable this for the time being. I'm not really too worried about it. Opi. Okay, so this is one that I have just recently installed. And I haven't really played around with it. But you can press a combination and basically it gives you, you set it to give you basically a shortcut menu to do anything you want. So if I wanted to target something, which is what I'm probably going to use it for primarily at first, so that I can just literally just scroll over. Okay, well, we're pulling. Okay, this is what we're killing. And this is what we're going to kill second. Uh, we're going to freeze trap this one. Or we're going to sheep this one. 
or we're going to banish this one and this one. These are our two tanks. Like this, this is how I do this in raids. It's literally just a quick push of a button, hover. You don't even have to click. You literally just hold the key bind, open this up, and you just hover over it. Boom, done. Oh, come down here. Oh, there it is, done. So this is really, really cool. Love this. That's what I'm using it for currently. But there's literally, you can make it anything. You can make it a profession window. You can make it a trinket menu. You can do whatever you want it to be entirely up to you. Um, really cool, really cool add-on. So moving down, obviously you've got Atlas loot, uh, Bag None. These are these are huge. I've already a lot of people know what Atlas loot does, Bag None does, Bartender does, basic mini map I just talked about. Classic loot assistant is something that our raid leaders want. This basically allows you to tell you like who needs to loot the core hound, so on and so forth. Um, bag none, I showed you guys this already, but it's just this bag. Now what's great about this is that I can toggle my bank when I'm not even at my bank. Now, obviously, I can't pull anything out, but it takes a snapshot of what was in your bank, and you're like, oh, what was in my bank? Oh, that's right. Okay, I'm good. And then you can just close it, and it's good to go. So I, I generally love this. Just close it out manually, and you're good to go. And also, Atlas Loot. Really, really cool. I'm sure everybody knows this already. Gives you a breakdown of dungeons, raids, crafting, factions, PvP, collections. And you can literally go through everything. Hell, I can go all the way to the next Ramus and it can tell me exactly what drops off of what boss, what the percentage is, the drop rate, everything. What drops off of trash, the whole nine yards. This is absolutely incredible. You've got to have this. Plus, they have the maps now built into it. Really, really amazing. Atlas map is just incredible. You can click this, toggle this. You can toggle it off. You can toggle it on. It's whatever. You click items, it shows you the items. Or if you come over and click the map, you can see the map. It's freaking amazing. I highly recommend everybody download that. So then you've got bag none, like I showed you. Bartender, this is how I've got my bar set up here. This is how bartender looks. This is how it works. Right click it for the, men for the menu or left click it just to show you where the bars are at. And you can unlock them and move them wherever you want to move them. So pretty self-explanatory. And again, moving down here basic mini map I've covered this this is this option right here to make your mini map look like this and move it around past opi you got plater that's how I'm able to get my enemies names to kind of pop up like this if I wanted to have it on it's on during combat I can highlight over that's plater right there that's what plater does for me and I used to think it was absolutely necessary but in raiding, it's not. But in PvP, this is huge. You're going to want to have Plater or something similar to it so you can see add-ons, debuffs, everything happening right in front of your face. Um, moving on to the next add-on is RCLC. This is for Loot Council. If, you don't, if you're not running Loot Council, you're probably not going to need this. But we have it because it's mandatory. And as a member of Loot Council, I have to have this. Real mob health. This is, a, this is a dandy one. So, like, right now, I can tell you exactly how much health this mob has down to the exact number. Um, even raid bosses this works for so this is really handy. I like having this I hated it when it just showed me, you know health percentages I did not care for that at all. So for me, this is huge So I highly recommend real mob health is really really handy add-on Titan panel. This is what I've got going on up here. I Basically break this down to its bare bones. I don't need the ammo count I don't need bag count or loot type or regen or volume or experience. I just wanted it for a clock my repair bill money and performance i want to be able to just take a quick glance up there see exactly what i need to see and move on it also holds all of my add-ons so they're not hovering all over my mini map literally the only mini map icon i have is group calendar for an add-on that's because it doesn't have the option to come up here i can't remove it from this mini map i don't know why it's annoying but you know it is what it is all my other add-ons are up here and out of the way if i need them i know where to find them and the next one is going to be your Vendor price, which is pretty self-explanatory. You can just open up your bags and see how much you vendor for. Very awesome. It also shows vendor call, vendor sell for, disenchant, average that it sells for, and also auction price. Now, the other thing that's really, really cool is the fact that I have the trinket menu. We've already gone over this. Very handy. And then weak auras. Weak auras is self-explanatory. You can build your own kind of information and UI from weak auras. Although some people have built their entire UI around weak auras. I like to keep it basic. I like to keep it simple. You got aspect of the hawk, feed pet, quick shots, which tells me when quick shots is active, rapid fire to tell me when rapid fire is active. And this is kind of what they look like stacked on top of each other. They're dulled out right now. 
I don't really know how to make them kind of go without them proccing, but this is rapid, this is quick shots. It goes from being red to being yellow all the way across. And then rapid fire goes from being black to red and it fills up this bar all the way around here and it just loops kind of like a semicircle. Love this and when this procs, boy, you know rapid fire is fixing to go off and it's right there right in front of me. I'm never gonna miss it. True shot and aspect of the hawk. These are straightforward. This tells me when these when those are not active. In the feed pet you guys have seen. My instance history is up at the top center. It's in yellow. You're never gonna miss it. So if you're in a group and you're constantly running in and out and resetting stuff, this will automatically proc and you'll know exactly how many instances you've been in and how long you have to wait for a reset. And then this one is one that I used to use and I may go back to it eventually. But this is your range check. This will tell you when you're in your dead zone, when you're in melee range. This will tell you when you're in less than 21 yards range. So you're free to use scatter shot. And when you're outside of 21 yard range. And basically when you're able to just kite for days and days and days. This is really, really handy. And I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of things I want to test in PvP. For example, um, I want to have a range check that tells me when I'm in and out of range of a caster, like a like a caster CC. Like when I'm when it, if am I in range of a warlock's ability to fear? Am I in range of a mage's ability to sheep? Am I in range of a warrior's intercept or charge? Really, like out of the box thinking. I still got to test it. I got to tweak it. See if it works. Um, a lot of people are like, well, it's not going to work because it's not an ability that you have. I'm like, oh, well, I mean, if you preload the ability, there's probably a third-party add-on you can install that will preload the information from that ability, and then you just put that spell ID in there, and it'll work just fine. I know it can work. It's just a question of putting in the effort. Oh, and there's a, an example of when quick shots procs is very, very handy. So that's my weak auras, and I think that about does it for my add-ons. There is the weapon swing timer, which I've shown you guys. It's right here in the center. And then you've also got character stats. Ooh, character stats is really, really cool. Character stats. There's the extended character stats. It takes up like the whole other half of your screen right here. I hated that. Couldn't stand it. But this is straightforward. It literally tells me my attack speed, attack power, total damage, crit strike, hit rating, done. No problems whatsoever. Love this, love this, love this. And very simple, very clean, very modern. And then DBM. DBM, I've got Questy disabled. I think everybody knows what Questy is, but I've had it disabled since I hit 60 because there's no reason for me to have it. And then DBM. Pretty self-explanatory. DBM's right here, and it's up here in the top right. If I want to just pull over here and pull up, where is Deadly Boss Mods? There it is. There's Deadly Boss Mods. No problems whatsoever. Just here we go. It's good to go. It's ready to roll. So that's it. Uh, that's all my add-ons. That's all my macros. That's my UI. That's how I design the way I do. If you find anything in here that you want to see, you want to have for yourself, again, check out the Discord down below. All that information's there. All the reasons why, what breaks down every macro, what they do, how they function. And you guys are welcome to give me feedback. Give me add-ons that you're using. Tell me why. Give me macros that you're using. Tell me why. I'll test them out, utilize them, maybe even improve on them, or add, you know, maybe some little, you know, side notes to say, hey, you can take this macro, this is an amazing macro, but you can add this functionality, or you can trade this functionality for this functionality, whole lot of things. This Discord is specifically designed to bring in the best Hunter Classic community available to everybody. And if you haven't, be sure to check out the uh, Final Fantasy VII playthroughs. They are up in this corner. Man, I've got to figure out how this works. This angle is killing me. But uh, I've been starting. I've been doing this Final Fantasy VII playthrough for for two, three weekends now. A lot of fun going on there. So be sure to check that out. And uh, as always, guys, love you guys as always. Be sure to check again Discord links for everything down below, and be sure to check out the Amazon Skillshare links down below. You guys can get all kinds of neat toys and fun stuff over at Skillshare. All kinds of classes you can take. It supports the channel and also gives you guys two free months of Skillshare. Be sure to check that out. And Amazon, use the link down below if you're going to buy anything that you seen to make this video or anything you want to buy for yourself. Be sure to use that link. It gives me a 6% commission and also doesn't rack up your prices. So it's all a win-win, boys. It's all a win-win. So love you guys as always. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. Zara signing out, boys.